What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, back with another episode of Cool Tech Under $50 for August. The series we show off some of the best tech you can find under that price point. If you see anything you like today, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. And as always, shout out to last month's winners, I've been in contact with you so you can claim your tech from last month's episode. And if you're trying to win, drop a thumbs up and also leave a comment on your favorite item that you like in today's video. But more importantly, only 33% of you are actually subscribed which means 66% are just stopping by and not hitting that sub button. So change that, because obviously I'm only gonna pick subscribers. And if we flip flop that ratio, we would hit 2 million subs today. So if you like the content, if you like the channel, don't forget, subscribe. Now first up is a super clean and minimal looking lamp. Absolutely love this. It's called the Me Lamp or something like that. I actually first saw this in a room tour project submission and fell in love with it and was super shocked to see it was only like 40 bucks. I mean, tell me this isn't the perfect clean and minimal lamp, right? So built in on the front is a little dial that's obviously for controlling the brightness as well as the color temperature all the way from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. So you can really dial it in. And it also says it has four different lighting modes. Things for like, you know, a, like a warm glow at night or when you're reading. But obviously you can just, you know, manually turn it yourself and dial in that lighting depending on your situation and how much light you need in the room for your desk. What I also really like is the fact that it's controllable through Apple HomeKit, also through Siri, uh, Google Assistant, and Amazon ALEXA. It's a lamp, there's not really too many other physical features to it, but like I said before, the visuals is the reason why I bought it. I love that super clean aesthetic. And hell, for 40 bucks, it was a steal. I currently saw on Amazon, it was just around 50 bucks, but that's Amazon for you. Prices are always fluctuating. If you can find it, definitely grab it. Now next is something I was admittedly thinking of not putting in this episode and maybe saving it for like a holiday edition, for like a stocking stuffer or a gift idea for someone else, but it really is cool and I'm sure a lot of you could definitely find it useful, especially because we have back to school season coming up. So maybe you can grab this for all your devices because it's this really bizarre all-in-one multi-device cleaning kit. So you probably got a dirty phone, a laptop, a tablet, and this little thing will help you polish up all those ports, clean all that pocket lint out. So six tools are built in. It also comes with a microfiber cloth and this cleaning solution, but tools one through three are for cleaning the ports or like the lightning or USB-C port on your device. Four and five are actually ports uh, for cleaning the pins on your cables. So again, with lightning ports especially, uh, it could get like the blackened pins over time due to just damage and corrosion. These will nicely clean that up for you. And there's also a brush tool for again, like cleaning speakers, the microphone, uh, the earpiece. You just can really polish up your phone and clean out all that lint. Because I know for me especially, like you probably don't think about it too much, but considering how often our phone is in our pocket, there is just so much lint that gets crammed up into your charging port. Regardless of whether you just solely like wirelessly charge or what, there is probably a ton of gunk crammed up in your charging port. And I know for me, I used the one tool right away, scraped out like pretty much a belly button's worth. But also I can appreciate the fact that we still do have that cleaning solution included so we can polish up the ports. So if you've noticed maybe your cable's been cutting out perhaps, uh, maybe it's not even a faulty cable. It could just be because the pins and the connectors are dirty themselves. So the fact that the tool has a solution and the extra ports to clean up the cable, I thought it was a nice little idea. So definitely a useful device. Throw it in your bag, your backpack, a drawer, always have it on hand. And it comes in under 30 bucks. That's why I said before, possibly like a good, you know, gift idea for the holidays, but uh, maybe a good just gift for someone else, regardless of the holidays. If you're feeling generous, buy this for a friend. Next, what if I told you there is a Razor Viper Ultimate clone that was lighter, slightly smaller, and a third of the price? Meet the Deluxe M800DB. And this clone has exploded in popularity out there for that exact reason. It's pretty much a smaller Viper Ultimate. And you can see it's nearly identical in shape, but you're only paying $40 dollars versus 120. Inside the box, it comes with a USB-C charging cable, uh, a wireless dongle for, and an extra pair of feet. Uh, they are a stock Teflon, so decking this out with something like a nice hyperglides will definitely do the trick. But my first impression of this just really blew me away, because if you were blindfolded, you would 100% think it's the Viper Ultimate. The only physical difference really is the DPI button is now on top instead of the bottom, and there aren't the right side buttons, but there are still the buttons on the left side. And we even have an RGB light strip with a button now. 
Say what? In terms of size, it's three millimeters shorter in length, a three millimeters smaller at the grip width, and two millimeters smaller at its hips. But the height of the front flare and the top of the mouse is the same as the Viper, and it also comes in four grams lighter at just 70 grams versus 74 grams. It's not quite at the size of like the Viper Mini, but hey, I mean, it's still smaller and lighter than the Viper Ultimate. The main difference really is gonna come in with the wireless technology they're using. Obviously, Razer is a multi-million, probably billion dollar company, and uh, their wireless technology and sensors admittedly gonna be better. And here we have a PAW3335 sensor that goes up to 16,000 DPI, but the switches in these are Kale 4.0 Reds, and they have a 60 million lifespan. And all around the quality control here, it's really a solid mouse. Gaming with it, since I've been maining the Viper Ultimate since release in 2019, I mean it when I say, it. Like switching over to this, it didn't feel like a difference at all. This mouse is so on par with the Viper Ultimate for a fraction of the price that it is really just impressive. That's the best way to say it. it's impressive for $40. So if you never wanted to deck out the money for the Viper Ultimate or you've wanted to really try it out but not, you know, take that plunge, M800 DB, 40 bucks. Now moving right along, you know me, you know the channel, you know this series, you know what I like. And I will never stop showing off cool macro pads, dials, knobs, anything like that that could help people out in terms of macros and extra functions. I'm telling you, I'll never stop. No ragrets. So meet the, <laughs> so meet the Huion KD100 keypad. It's wireless, has 18 programmable keys, plus a multifunctional dial up top. And while it was made for their own like drawing tablets and stuff, you don't need it. It's not required. You can use this without a drawing tablet and set it to be a bunch of different macros, functions, and commands, controls. Yes. So with it being wireless, it actually has a 100 hour battery life, which is definitely pretty impressive. You could also choose to use it wired because it has USB-C port, thank you. But since it is so compact, like a standard keypad that you would buy out there, or people who buy like numpads and stuff, the added functionality is really impressive. So for the 18 programmable keys, the actual keys themselves are like the scissor keys you would find on a laptop, so it's not gonna be like a really satisfying uh, like mechanical switch, for example. But honestly, with something like this, not too big of a deal. But what I really like about the dial is it has these super satisfying clicks when you rotate it. And there's actually a button in the middle of the dial, which lets you actually change up on the fly what the dial does. So inside their software, you can go in and really reprogram everything on here. You can set each key to do things like a keyboard stroke, a mouse click, I'm running certain programs or system applications, multimedia. It's all right there, just very easily configurable. And like I said before, with the three different features built into the volume dial, you have those same options available to you. So it'll say feature one through three, you click on the one you want to change or adjust, and you'll have those same options. So you can make it do things like scrolling up and down or in and out of your timeline. Make it a volume wheel, obviously, for controlling like Spotify and stuff, your system audio. So as I said before, it's really being advertised and sold along with like their drawing tablets and stuff, but there's no telling you what you can or can't use this for. Photo editing, video editing, uh, macros for gaming, 3D design, animation, whatever you want, have this wirelessly on your desk, bunch of functions right at arm's reach. I'll never stop showing off knobs, macro pads, keypads, anything cool. 50 bucks, hell of a good deal. Then last but not least, we have the Genki Shadowcast. And this little HDMI device lets you use a laptop, for example, as like a monitor or as its own display to play and record games. Things like using your laptop to play your Nintendo Switch, your Xbox, a PS5, really any HDMI device you can hook up to the Shadowcast and now have it displayed or captured on your laptop or a PC, really. It's essentially a more affordable Elgato capture card. Instead of being $200, this little guy is just 50. They do have their own arcade software you can go in and download to do things like monitor your gameplay for capturing, uh, but also you can just use like OBS and that'll work just fine as well. And just like any other capture card, if you want, you can use this with like a, a DSLR and have it be like a, a webcam type thing. So I'll admit when I first saw this and picked it up, I thought it turned any device into like a display. Not so much like a, a capture card, or like a pass-through device like this is, but I just thought your laptop would be turned into a monitor, which is something you can't do, you know? Uh, but for being what it is, again, a much cheaper alternative to an Elgato capture card out there, 50 bucks versus 200, and I've showed off a lot of you know alternative capture cards in the past and HDMI capture cards like this. Uh, so this one giving you a, uh, just another option out there to pick from for $50, and there's like 
0.2 seconds of delay and stuff for capturing. So again, with a lot of your capture cards out there, that's pretty standard and normal. Uh, but again, if you want to uh, find a quick and cheap way to rip your gameplay, put it online, Genki Shadowcast, 50 bucks. And guys, that'll wrap it up for this episode of Cool Tech Under $50 for August. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, check the links in the description down below. I'll have it all there for you. If you want to win, make sure you're subscribed. Let's hit 2 million before next month. Probably impossible, but who knows? If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.